oftentimes people don't want to talk about it and they don't know how to handle it. There's no manual, you know, written specifically for a cancer diagnosis. And so a lot of times people, they just kind of struggle through it in a sense and learn as they go. But then also their family, friends, love work, uh, loved ones, co-workers, they don't know what to say. So they yeah. say weird things sometimes. And that could be just uncomfortable for everyone. But I think talking about it, if you can, before it happens, will make it a little bit easier if it does happen. Um, you know, sure. unfortunately, today to know someone who has been touched by cancer in some way. Yeah, it is pretty common. I mean, it, it went from, um, I don't know, there's uh, representations of back in the, say, the 50s and 60s where people would whisper it, say they would call it the big C, and people didn't talk about <laughs> yeah. it. It was almost very embarrassing to, yeah. or people considered it embarrassing. We've come a long way since then where people are not embarrassed as much by it but do you run into that sometimes too where people feel some kind of personal shame like they they're uh, like they did something wrong um absolutely i um, actually experienced that myself oh. um and i've talked to many other people who feel embarrassed and they're like well what did i do wrong you know was yeah. i not eating good enough was i not exercising good enough um and it wasn't until after i got through that period of my life, say maybe about three years after treatment is when I actually started feeling comfortable talking about it mm. because I realized how much I learned and how what I learned could help other people. Yeah, for sure. And that's, that's very often one of the, one of the best ways I think people get through some of these experiences uh, or make sense of them afterwards what am i trying to say you turn you turn a uh, like a disaster into a strength in a way you you, yeah. turn, yeah, you turn trauma into triumph by sharing your story and helping other people who are going through the same thing i've that seems to be a very consistent theme in a lot of folks i'm talking to as well as uh and well and i think broadly speaking that matches with the philosophical and and psychological you know, library of okay, this is kind of how it works since one of the best ways to heal yourself personally after such an experience. That's right. That's right. Um, for me, it was like, I, I went through this. I'm sure there's a reason behind it. And for me, that was really important was understanding that reason, the reasons and that, with an S mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, one of those was to be able to reach back and help other people. That was definitely one of those reasons. Yeah, that and that's beautiful too. Is that so? I mean, if anyone's out there listening and you, you've gone through stuff and it still bothers you, see if you can yeah turn that trauma into a triumph. See see if you can do something. Do like there's a, there's a magic in doing something about mm -hmm. a problem. Uh, using even negative emotions sometimes to inspire positive action um so if you're out there listening to this that's uh you know definitely you can go to on the other side dot life and and connect with uh Talia and um maybe uh do, do you have people reach out like that i mean i don't want to uh, if that's not what you do, I don't want yes. to encourage it, but but I imagine you do. Absolutely. Uh, people can reach out. Actually, there is a place on my website where they can schedule a free 30-minute meet and greet. And nice. that is where, you know, I would learn a little bit about them. And then, of course, share a little bit about me. And if I can help them, I let them know how. If I feel like it's not a good fit or they feel like it's not a good fit, yeah. I will try to, you know, find someone else who can support them. That is a big deal too. Um, it, there's uh, it, even say in the realm, broader realm of, of finding a private uh, professional counselor uh, just to talk to about depression mm -hmm. or any of your problems in your life. Sometimes people find one and they don't like their personality, don't like the way they speak, don't like the way they think. It's a mismatch. And honestly, neither the patient nor the therapist is to blame in that regard. Different styles, different folks, different personalities, and they can clash. Uh, sometimes just the way you speak, I get annoyed involuntarily <laughs> and it ain't not you, so I'm out of here. But, and then some folks look at that like, oh, therapists are crap. I tried to see one, like, ah, maybe try a different one. But I, I love the idea that, you know, if your style 
doesn't it just doesn't resonate doesn't click with someone the way you approach it the way you speak your personality nothing wrong with you nothing wrong with them you find someone else and and that's that's a, a wonderful loving thing that you do you don't just say well good luck you're like let me let me try and find someone else that's that's beautiful 